Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. The next topic of our discussion is autoimmune gastritis. So autoimmune gastritis, as the name shows, is an autoimmune reaction against the gastric mucosa. It is an immune-mediated damage to gastric mucosal cells, particularly parietal cells and chief cells. The parietal cells secrete intrinsic factor, whereas the chief cells secrete hydrochloric acid. Autoimmune gastritis constitutes almost 10% of all cases of chronic gastritis. Unlike H. pylori chronic gastritis, the autoimmune gastritis only involves the body and fundus of the stomach, whereas it spares the antrum. The antrum is affected in H. pylori associated chronic gastritis. Autoimmune gastritis exhibits a strong association with other autoimmune diseases such as Hashimoto's thyroiditis, type 1 diabetes mellitus, and rheumatoid arthritis. The disease more commonly affects the females rather than the males, like all the autoimmune diseases, and there is a strong genetic predisposition as the disease occurs in first degree relatives more often than the others. So in autoimmune gastritis, autoantibodies are formed against the parietal cells hydrogen potassium ATPase. Hydrogen potassium ATPase is a protein channel present in the parietal cells. So these antibodies formed against the hydrogen potassium ATPase channel form antigen antibody complex resulting in the recruitment of CD4 T cells. These CD4 T cells damage the parietal cells. Since the parietal cells produce intrinsic factor, there is a decreased production of intrinsic factor due to loss of parietal cells. There is lack of vitamin B12 absorption resulting in vitamin B12 deficiency which gives rise to megaloblastic or pernicious anemia, neuropathies and atrophic glossitis. Moreover, the chief cells are also present in the close proximity to parietal cells and hence the CD4 T cells also damage the chief cells. The chief cells produce acid and decrease in the number of chief cells result in decreased acid secretion. Once the acid secretion decreases, through the positive feedback mechanism, it activates the G cells which produce increased gastrin, hence resulting in hypergastrinemia. Moreover, the G cells also undergo hypertrophy and since acid is necessary for iron absorption, decreased acid secretion also results in iron deficiency. The severe cases of autoimmune gastritis result in atrophic gastritis. The histological picture reveals loss of parietal cells and chief cells. Hence, there is a decreased intrinsic factor and decreased hydrochloric acid production. In addition, there is diffused mucosal damage and atrophy as well in the severe cases. The main inflammatory cells that are present in autoimmune gastritis include lymphocytes, plasma cells and macrophages. Minimal neutrophils are also present in certain cases. Due to constant damage, the gastric epithelium is replaced by the intestinal columnar epithelium. This replacement of the epithelium is known as metaplasia. Moreover, there are increased goblet cells as well, which secrete mucus. Since there is decrease in hydrochloric acid, G cells become hypertrophic due to excessive secretion of gastrin. One particular feature about autoimmune gastritis is the hypertrophy of the endocrine cells. The endocrine cells present in the stomach are also known as enterochromaffin-like cells. These enterochromaffin-like cells control the acid secretion by releasing histamine. Histamine stimulates the secretion of acid by the chief cells. The hypertrophy of enterochromaffin-like cells can also transform into a neuroendocrine tumor which is known as carcinoid tumor. Coming on towards this histological picture, this reveals certain atrophic glands undergoing destruction and there is excessive inflammatory infiltrate as well, causing damage to the gastric mucosa. One thing to remember in autoimmune gastritis is that it typically involves the body and fundus of the stomach. 
whereas the antrum of the stomach is preserved. Autoimmune gastritis has a slow and insidious onset and that is why it is diagnosed usually in the late age around 60 years. The disease has a strong association with other, with other autoimmune diseases, most commonly Hashimoto's thyroiditis and type 1 diabetes mellitus. The disease most commonly comes to the attention due to its secondary effects. The secondary effects of autoimmune gastritis include vitamin B12 deficiency due to lack of intrinsic factor. Vitamin B12 deficiency results in megaloblastic anemia or also known as pernicious anemia. It can also cause neuropathy which is characterized in the early stages by tingling and numbness in the peripheries. The neuropathy at the late stages can also involve the main nerves and central nervous system. Moreover, there is often atrophic glossitis as well. Atrophic glossitis is characterized by the loss of papilla of the tongue. Hence, the tongue appears to be smooth and glossy. Since there is decreased acid secretion, which affects the iron absorption, iron deficiency can also occur resulting in iron deficiency anemia. The diagnosis of autoimmune gastritis is based on the clinical signs and detection of parietal cells antibodies in the blood. The treatment is mostly symptomatic, aiming to correct the vitamin B12 levels and iron supplements to counter iron deficiency. Endoscopy is also performed for the biopsy purpose. The disease requires constant monitoring because autoimmune gastritis increases the risk of gastric carcinoma by four times. So this concludes our discussion about autoimmune gastritis. If you have any questions, do let us know in the comment section. Thank you.